just in Western Australia alone, I think um, what happened, they, they went through all of our communities. And what they've done is um, really took all our leaders out of there. All the leaders from Western Australia and shuffled them up to Rotten's Island. That's where they, they're all in there. Yeah. And really, we didn't have any authority as well. <coughs> Hmm. So just for, just for us, what's Australian is just that's where our, yeah. some of our history is made. And, and Mabo did a silly thing as well in the decision. Um, I don't know the exact wording of it, but I do know that the inference is that if you've lost it, you're not allowed to resurrect it and bring it back. Yeah? But that's not our work. That's not our work. In our law, if them old people didn't sing that song down properly, what they call proper way, and put him to sleep proper forever, well, then you can't sing him back up again. That's our way. Yeah? And so, because they're not sung down, and the old people said, go and get them fellows, they know you, before you get it, get the right people to come in. We show you everything, we'll sing it, but you bring other people in and get them dancers back and everything for that place. And I've been doing that, and we've been singing it back up, putting it back. And the first thing my mob said, the, even my older sister and another cousin, they all said, you sing that up, make sure you put them back to sleep. Don't let them old people walk around here with amongst us because we don't know how to deal with it. So they real wet, you know, they shy, they surreal superstition black fellas. But I can tell you the reality of singing them up though, when we did sing them up, when we did the Seven Sisters stuff and the APY people come across and, and we did all that with the women and I took them out there and I showed them where everything was and left it with my mother and my sisters and that. And they sang everything up. They opened everything up, so much so that people in Walgett and Colorinda, Bryan, Lightning Reach were seeing their ancestors come back, standing in the corner in the house at night time, looking at them. And they could see them physically. And they, they and all the black would ring me up on the mobile phone, what, what? And, you know, they're using their foot. What you doing? I said, we're doing nothing, we're just fixing things up. They said, no, all, the, all our mobs down here looking at us. They come back. What you doing? I said, no, they'll go back to sleep soon when we finish. It really scared them. Yeah. And so the thing is real. And, this is, and, and the court, that Mabo court, said we're not allowed to bring that back. They said we can't resurrect our stories. We can't reinstate our, our culture. Now, they have no legal right to say that. Yeah. Because basically what they're saying is that if you've lost it with this tide and time of history, washed of history, the tide of history has washed away your presence, rubbish, you're still here. Yeah? And so that was merely a convenient thing that the court got away with. Yeah? And uh, that, was, that was a full bench. Now, the full bench supported his judgment yeah, in the High Court. And so where do they go to next? The place they go to next is that they say our law has always been here and we operate under our law and you don't do your law. You may say that under your law we don't have native title over it, but we don't want native title. We own the country anyway. And this is where we've got to get the power base to. Yeah? And so all them prescribed body corporates, they're the worst thing you can ever imagine when you realise what, them, what they're doing, those prescribed body corporates. Those proscribed body corporates have taken ownership away from the traditional owners, the proper people. Yeah, it's all about government control. That's what it's about. Yeah? And we can, it's easy. There is a method that we can wipe out the traditional, uh, those P PBCs. Right? We can get rid of them any time we want to. Yeah? And we can do up a template to show you how to get rid of those PBCs. So your challenge now to go on Get your people together, right? Don't for one minute try and pretend that one person or two people can do it. It won't work, yeah? So you've got to get that governance in place and, and that governance are the ones who are going to make all these decisions. And um, make sure you do your boundaries properly, yeah? Because you see, the other thing, and I was given this little clue by uh, this white fellow was a very clever lawyer, but he had an accident and he had a serious accident and um, he, he lost the ability to have discretion. He got no shame, in other words, you know, the part of his brain was affected. You know, so he's the sort of fellow, if he got something to say to you and he tell him the truth, he's not realising that he's insulting you because he, he doesn't have that 
anymore because his brain is affected that way. So he's just telling you straight as it is, you know. And there's no shame and he, he don't hold anything back. Anyway, so he was, he was not allowed to practice law anymore, but, it, but he likes what I do. And he rings me up all the time and he says, now I've been studying something else about this white man law. I said, all right. Always remember that all this law comes from the Judeo-Christian teachings. And he said, one of the things you've got to do, Michael, he said, when you were prosecuting, he said, tell me what you used to do if you had a rapist, you were prosecuting a rapist, and you had a judge here who was more involved in corporate law. What would you do? I said, well, the first thing I would do is go in there and say that the Crown is not ready to proceed through this case and keep doing that and adjourning it all the time until I get the right judge. Yeah? Because I know them judges. And so when I get the right judge, and I know that judge don't like rapists, then I'll say, well, the Crown's ready to proceed, Your Honour. But I won't proceed if I've got someone who's more sympathetic to this thing and doesn't deal with that. So as a prosecutor, I keep changing judges until I'm ready to let the matter go. That's one of the little tactics you do in the courts. And so when you think your matter's been put off and adjourned all the time, it's not because of anything else other than they want the right judge who's going to support the charges. Yeah? That's why they do it. So I, what I did, this fellow, he said to me, now, Michael, he said, if you take things to the high court, have a look at who the judges are going to be sitting on that high court. Find out who each judge is. Find out if they go to church. What church do they go to? Yeah? And if you've got a majority of Catholics or you've got a majority of Anglicans on there or a majority of Lutheran, then you go and look at the Lutheran Church Bible, go and look at the Anglican Bible, King John, and go and have a look at this Catholic Bible over here. When you do that, always then find elements within that Bible that tell them they're doing the wrong thing. Yeah? One of the wrong things is how you do not move the stone the ancient stone, what do they call it? Richard Yu, the, the boundary stones. Hey? The boundary stones. The, the boundary stones. No one has a right, and this is in the Bible, no one has a right to move the boundary stones of another. Yeah? No one. Now you heard here in the last couple of days what they do with stone churches. You heard here the other day what they do with these obelisks that they're putting up all, all through Western Australia. And so if you, look at the, if you look at those obelisks and you look at those churches, there's a, there's a little stone there which give, has a number on it. And that number tells you how far they're away, how far they're away from where the central decisions are made. That's what those numbers represent. Yeah? And so, but what it is, it, so from that there where they make the decision, that stone is marking their boundaries. So in Western Australia, they had no boundary stones out in your fellow's country. So they put their mobilisk up. And so now they're claiming your country with that stone. So destroy them as quick as you can. Yeah? And those churches, those stone churches, they put them in marketplaces and the churches represent a stone marking of their boundary. But now we're going to argue, and we have, and that's one of the things this fellow said, he said, always look at what the church says, what the Bible says, and then when you go into court, you say, Your Honour, hang on a minute, there is this part in the Bible. Yeah? Now, if you look at the front of all the legislation in Australia, most of it says that the, it says something about God and Queen. Yeah? Now, when you look at that, you understand what this fellow's talking about. So if God and Queen operating together, the Divine and, these, and the Chosen One, so then you remind them of what, that, what their rules say in their Bibles. And he said, don't ever forget it. Yeah. It's a way of really bringing them to their knees.